Hi friends. Uh, hello. Hi. How are you? I hope you guys are having a wonderful day today. We're in this little position on my desk because I need to look at my computer for this video because I have a lot to talk about. So for those of you, <laughs> for those of you that might be new to my channel, um, I normally have a much better filming setup. I do this setup when I want to be near my computer so I can just, I probably could just use my laptop but also I kind of like this cozy little chat sesh. I really like the candles. I like the vibe. So this is what we're doing. Um, so today's video, we're going to be talking about the rewired soul. So I know some of you guys are like, what? him and I'm like yeah unfortunately we have to talk about him again because I just want a little reminder out there um because I think this man is dangerous so <laughs> I don't say this about a lot of people uh, when I make my videos I usually try to give people the benefit of the doubt I try to be really fair I try to you know see things from multiple perspectives I really do try with the rewired soul I cannot do that it is getting to a point and has been at a point where I actually find this man to be a danger to other creators here on YouTube and I'm gonna explain why I feel that way so if you want to stick around and see why I feel that way you can if you think I'm just ridiculous that's totally fine too um, but I truly think he's a danger to creators and I want to explain that so the rewired soul recently his newest target because his Trisha Paytas videos haven't been getting him the views that he wants so here's the thing let me just give you some backstory really quick the rewired soul a few months ago got in it on YouTube there was a lot of drama surrounding him trying to remember exactly when it was. It wasn't that long ago. It was a few months ago. About four months ago, the Rewired Soul got in it with a bunch of different channels. He was having issues with people like Primic, uh, drama channels, just pretty much everyone. There was like a big influx in people making videos about him just being like, you are a problem. Um, and he made all, first of all, he made some videos that were just nuts, um, where he was basically just like threatening people if they weren't you know, if they were making videos about him, he was threatening to get their videos taken down, their channels removed. He was doing all these crazy things. And then he was basically like, okay, I'm done now. I'm going to take a two week break from YouTube. And when I come back, I'm no longer going to be posting like drama commentary. Because his big thing was like, I am not a drama channel. I'm a mental health channel. That's what it was. He's like, I'm a mental health channel, not a drama channel. Mind you, this man has no credentials to be calling himself uh, anything mental health related. I know now he's trying to say that he is a, oh my God, what was it? A sober life coach. So he's also now, he wasn't at this time, but now he is a licensed sober coach. Um, which from what I can tell based on Googling sober coaches and being a sober coach is you're basically, if you're in like the AA and NA program or whatever, you'll know that there's this thing called sponsors. So typically, if you go to something like a rehabilitation, say you do rehab for like 30 days, you'll get out and usually the big thing is called, it's called 90 and 90. So the big push they try to get you to do is to go to 90, 90 AA meetings in 90 days. This is if you go to a 12-step facility. I hope this is all making sense. I'm not using jargon that doesn't make sense to people. But um, a 12-step is like the program. It's the 12-step program. It's kind of the universal program, well, at least in America. America. And I know in other countries they have it too for Alcoholics Anonymous and Narcotics Anonymous. It's like the whole Bill W thing, okay? So normally you'll do 90 and 90. And when you go to your first couple of meetings, they really push you to find a sponsor. Is a person who has done the 12 steps, the 12 step program, um, a person who's kind of been sober, has some time. They recommend the person has at least like two to three years just because then they have a your first year of recovery, you're most likely to relapse. So they want people who have time. You know, you can relapse at any point in your recovery, but they want people who have time. Um, so you're, that would be your person. They're your sponsor. They help you. They go to meetings with you. They give you guidance. They help you through the 12 steps. A big part of, I think, sobriety that people don't know is a lot of it is so peer based. So it's your peers. They help you do whatever. What it seems like being a sober coach is, is being a sponsor, but you have more information is basically so this isn't he's still not a mental health professional is my point he's a sponsor he's like he's a sponsor who has slightly more training than your average sponsor basically and you can earn this certificate in as little as three months so even though he puts this at the beginning of his videos to make himself sound more legit this is not like a legit thing this is like people being it, to me personally it seems like people who are able to make jobs out of being sponsors which there's nothing wrong with that that's still very beneficial to addicts and you know people in recovery but whatever so anyway 
he's been having all these issues. He doesn't have any real criteria, any real schooling on mental health, but he has this channel where he constantly talks about it. And sometimes he does a good job with certain things. Like he started doing these things where he would talk about TV shows and TV show characters and give sort of an in-depth analysis into the TV show character. And those were actually like, okay, I still didn't like them, but they were okay because I just don't like him. But they were okay because it was like, okay, you're not putting real people at risk here by saying what you're saying. You're just kind of speculating off of a character that's not real. And then sure enough, even though he said he was never going to get back into being a drama channel, even though he said he was never going to start talking about social commentary on YouTube again, uh, sure enough, he, his videos were not getting a lot of views, which, you know, happens when you switch your content up. Uh, his videos weren't getting a ton of views like they were before. He was still getting decent views, but for the channel, his size of being a channel, he wasn't getting as good of views as he did before. After about one month, he started talking about YouTubers again and YouTube drama. And this puts us where we are at now. So he has been making these social commentary videos about YouTubers and all of this stuff again and going back and forth, whatever. And he's been making these for months and I've kind of just been like trying not to pay attention. As somebody who is currently, I'll give you my credentials, I guess, if you want to know. I'm currently in school. One year left before I will have my bachelor's in social work, so I do a lot of mental health stuff, um, and I am already planning on doing the advanced master's program, so uh, for my social work program, so I'll have a master's in social work, um, and I'll also be licensed as like a clinical social worker, whatever. So those are my things, and I also have done tons of internships, done a lot of work with this stuff. This is like my, I love mental health, I love stuff like this, so to see someone who has a very blatant disregard for people's mental health is disturbing to me. I'm sorry. Like, I don't know how, how I don't know a nicer way to put that. It's disturbing. Like, the, his stuff is disturbing to me. So I've been trying to ignore him because I do think that he kind of feeds off of this negative attention. I think he feeds off of people like YouTubers noticing his content, like the YouTubers he talks about. Like, I think he enjoys when Trisha Paytas calls him out. I think he enjoys the fact that now Taylor Nicole Dean has called him out. Like, I, he feeds off of this stuff. He feeds off of people making videos like him. But he's taken it to a point where I'm actually like, wow, you're putting someone at risk right now. Um, and I'm not going to just sit here and allow, because his channel, the thing is too, you go to his social blade and he's gaining subscribers again. And you're just like, what? Why? He's gaining subscribers again. People who don't know all of the stuff that's happened with him and don't know all of the genuine criticisms people have of him are finding his channel because he's talking about YouTube drama and that is a very good way to get views and get subscribers. It's a great way to do it. He's doing that. People are subscribing and he's growing again. And now he's putting someone's life at risk. So this kid brings us to Taylor Nicole Dean. That was such a long explanation, but like I feel like that backstory is so necessary if you want to understand this story now. So Taylor Nicole Dean, I don't know a ton about her. I've heard stories about her before on YouTube and I know that she does struggle with drug addiction, um, which hi, we're in an opioid epidemic in America right now and a lot of people are struggling with drug addictions. She went to rehab recently and I guess she got out of rehab and she got into a new relationship with a new person and Chris decided that it was his duty to make videos about this. From my understanding is very newly sober like she did a 30-day rehab and now she's been out for like a few days this has not been a long time and she has a guy that she's like dating that she's interested in whatever it's 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 like a rehab it is like a rehab boyfriend like I guess she like met him in recovery or something like that um and Chris decided to make videos on this topic he made one two days ago and one one day ago and the first one is titled Taylor Nicole Dean has a new boyfriend already and in this video I was I was annoyed so he's the things the thing about Chris and I've said this from the get-go is that he very much is like a person who googled something and then is sharing that information it's googleable knowledge he's not sharing anything or it's like knowledge that you would know if you ever went to rehab like if because I've gone I've, I'm five years sober hi well gonna be in like 20 days hi hello um so I I did the whole thing like I did the rehab I did all of that whatever and he's correct that you're really they encourage you when you are leaving rehab and they incur first of all in rehab if you're actually in a 30 day like 30 90 whatever day rehabilitation center you really aren't supposed to have relationships it's not supposed to happen people still do um because shockingly enough when you put 25 strangers together and force them to talk about all the deep crazy things that have happened in their life uh and you want them to relate to each other people form connections i know that sounds crazy <laughs> 
it's, it's human nature. I know, I understand the reasoning for not wanting relationships, and I'll get into that in a second, because some of the points he made were correct. Like, I'll give that to him. Um, but he's not the person to be making the points, and I'll get to that too. So he is correct that you really aren't supposed to have a relationship inside of rehab. And when you leave rehab, they encourage you for the first year of your sobriety not to, there, there's like this whole thing. You're not supposed to make any big life changes. You're not supposed to start any new relationships. You're not supposed to make any drastic changes about like your living situation unless you're in a dangerous one and you're getting out of it. But if your living situation was safe, you're not supposed to like move to a different country. Like there are these kind of guidelines that they say that are like, hey, this is what we've found works for a lot of people. And because you're going to be in such a really unstable frame of mind, because you know, you're newly sober, that's a really unstable time. They don't want you to make any of those decisions. That's the reason for it though. It's not because they're like, oh, you're an idiot if you get into a relationship. They're just saying like, this might be the best course of action if you're trying to stay sober. My problem with Chris's video is that first of all, just first and foremost, he does not know Taylor. He's never met her. He knows nothing about her situation except for what's been put online. He is not her sponsor. He is not her sober life coach. He's not a therapist. He is not her doctor. Like he does not know her or anything about her situation. Nothing, nothing about her situation. When people are newly sober, that is so hard. That is like the hardest time. The first, like, I would say year, honestly, the first year of sobriety sucks. It's uncertain. You're adjusting to a whole new lifestyle. It's so hard. It's so hard. That's the reason people relapse. Relapse, honestly, they tell you this in rehab, relapse is part of your recovery. Like, to full transparency. It's completely part of recovery. They know people who are work in rehab facilities and even addicts because they tell you. They know that you're going to relapse probably. The probability and the chances of you relapsing are high because it is such a trying and weird time. The year after is such a weird time. So I think for me to have someone like Chris who does know that, like he knows that. He allegedly worked in a rehab for like, although I'm not going to get into all that. <laughs> you can go watch other videos about him if you want to know the whole thing about him working in a rehab and like all of this stuff. You can go watch it, whatever. He worked in a rehab for three years and he's seven years sober. He said he just celebrated seven years sober, which is fantastic. Congratulations. Why would you knowingly put somebody's sobriety at risk by making a video like this, by making a video as stupid as this? And then when you know she saw it, because she tweeted at him, she literally retweeted his video and was like, please don't make videos about my recovery. Please don't cover this. It's a sensitive topic. I'm dealing with it, like whatever. And then he tweets at her. Let me find in the exact tweet. So Taylor Nicole Dean said, please stop making videos to profit off my addiction and just let me talk about it myself first, at least in a video, no matter your intention. And he said, this grinded my gears so much. I got so mad when I saw this. Please be a better example of recovery for your audience. The absolute last thing that a person who is recovering from sobriety should be worried about is anyone but themselves. They should literally only be focusing on themselves and doing what's best for them. She should not be focusing on being a good person of sobriety. Like, first of all, fuck you, honestly. Fuck you for saying that. That's such a fucked up thing to, I'm so, I never swear on this channel, but fuck you. That's a horrific thing to say to a person who's in sobriety because then number one, if she does relapse, now she has some asshat who's pretending that he's a real therapist on the internet saying, please be a better example of recovery for your audience. So if she does relapse, now she has that guilt in her head that she's not being a good example for her audience. I need to like, calm down. I get so mad because how dare you try and come in and pr like, how dare you try to come into this girl's life? You don't know her and then say something as kind condescending and rude as be a better example. It is not her job right now to be a good, set a good example for her subscribers. It is not her job to be the poster child of recovery at the moment. Her one and only job is to remain sober to the best of her ability. That is literally her only job. Dating this guy is helping her. You know what? And the other thing is too, don't act like this doesn't happen. People, this is so like, this is like textbook for addicts. 
So many people get into AA and start dating somebody. So many people get into recovery and start dating other people. Cause like I said before, you're shoved into a room with these people and forced to talk about your deepest, most emotional, the worst things you've ever done in your life is what you're talking about with these people. Of course you form connections and friendships and sometimes relationships from that. Are they advisable? And do I understand the problem with rehab relationships? Absolutely. But you don't know her. You don't know her situation. Guess who does? Her sponsor, her doctors. Guess who should be telling her that maybe she shouldn't be in this relationship? Her sponsors, her doctors, not you, not some random stranger on the internet who is trying to question her and pressure her to be a better example of sobriety. Get out of here with that nonsense. That is just absolutely the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard somebody say to somebody recovering in my entire life. And it further proves to me in my brain that this man, he doesn't care whatsoever about any of the people he is speaking about. He doesn't care if she literally overdosed and died tomorrow, because if he did, he wouldn't say stuff like this. Nobody who actually cares about people who are recovering and actually knows about recovery would ever say something like that to an addict because it's a screwed up crappy thing to say. You know what else real mental health professionals don't do? They don't use clickbait titles with you making silly faces. They don't try and use people's names for for clout and for clicks like it's so and to sell your freaking book because I don't think it's a coincidence that you're trying to get into some, some drama with people now that you have a new book to promote some BS book that makes no freaking sense because you have no reason to be writing it in the first place. I have to calm down. I'm gonna rewire my anger and just take a real quick second because I'm angry at this man. I truly think his blatant disregard to people like Trisha Paytas, who despite what you want to say about her, because I have a lot to say about her and I think she has a lot of issues, she has mental health issues. I guarantee you aren't helping. Like seeing images like therapy isn't working for Trisha Paytas with pictures of her in the thumbnail. Now this is a real thing from three days ago. Therapy isn't working for Trisha Paytas and it's like pictures of her. Seeing that, she probably doesn't watch that video. I don't even know, I watched some of that video and it really wasn't even about Trisha Paytas, it was clickbait, but she's gonna see that. How is that beneficial to her? He does not care about the people he's talking about and the other thing is he doesn't care about you. His big thing is like, well, I care about you, my subscribers. I want you to learn from this. I want you to be better for this. He wouldn't be so haphazardly making crazy generalizations about mental health, making crazy explanations to try and help mass amounts of people. Mental health is an individualized process. There are not generalizations that can be made that will help everybody. There's probably not even generalizations that can be made that will help a couple of people. Everybody's circumstances are so different and need such a different set of mental health that except for informing somebody about something and giving information like real mental health channels do, you trying to turn YouTube topics into this, I don't even know if I'm making sense, but it's like him trying to turn something like Trisha Paytas into this big thing about why people need therapy. It's not applicable to most people's situations. It doesn't apply to most people, the things that he's talking about. They don't apply to most people. What this man cares about, and I'm telling you right now, because if he did, if he did care about mental health, if he cared about your mental health, he would have done what he said he was going to do, and he would have stopped talking about drama in relation to YouTube. He would have stopped all of that, and he would have just been happy helping the people he was helping with the views he was getting not talking about this stuff. He wasn't. It's not because he wants to spend his spread his message. It's not because he cares about you. It's because he wants money. He wants your money. He wants money. He wants money from this YouTube channel. That's why he uploads one, two, three, four. He uploaded five videos in one day. You know who does that? People who want money. <laughs> Money, that's what he wants. That's what this man wants. He does not care about his subscribers. He certainly has a blatant disregard for the creators that he's using their names to make money off of. And he's a bad person. He's a danger to the people that he talks about. He pinpoints YouTubers who are going through the worst time in their life and he tries to capitalize off of them and tries to make it seem like he, he doesn't. He doesn't care. He doesn't care about holding Taylor accountable. He doesn't care about any of that because if he cared about that, he would shut up and stop making these videos about her. He would let the people that are around her 
and are actually in her circle and are the people she's actually going to listen to, he would let them handle this situation. It's ridiculous. It infuriates me. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> I'm infuriated by him. I'm infuriated. I just want it to be like a warning that nobody should be taking this person seriously. Nobody, not a single soul, not a single rewired soul should be taking this man seriously. Nobody should be taking his advice. He is not trained and he is a danger to the YouTubers that he is talking about. He is actively causing them harm and does not care. She tweets about him. He makes another video that's more money in his pocket. Taylor Nicole Dean's in denial. That's probably going to be the next video. I guarantee it. I'm so sick of this man and I just want him to go away. <laughs> Get off the internet. Go work at a treatment facility. Like meet patients one to one and then help them. Like I have no problem with the fight for mental health and like working with people with mental health. But don't just do this stuff where you're like just don't just stop and stop. I'm over it. This was this was the most angry I've ever gotten making a video. I'm really mad. I think this is so gross. It's just so ugly. I hope you guys like this video. I'm sorry if it was ranty. It, this isn't me trying to say like, go send him hate. Don't send him hate. Be better than that. Be above that because that's something he would do. Like, don't go send this man hate, but don't, don't watch his videos. Unsubscribe. The more, the more that you like ignore this and the more we just stop watching the videos, unsubscribe, keep the views low, he's gonna just leave. He really is because that's all he cares about is the views and the money and the subscribers. He'll find another gimmick and a hustle and a way to make money that's not this and honestly I hope he does because right now he's literally he's a danger he's a danger to youtubers that's how I feel truly that's my thoughts on that so uh hope you guys like this video if you did please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither I'm honestly just so happy you're watching me thank you so much for being here uh please go watch some of my other videos where I'm much more grounded and well-spoken and I'm able to adequately tell you what I'm feeling about a person instead of me just yelling in this one um i love you guys so so much uh, my merch my social media and everything i'm wearing on my face will be linked down below and yeah i love you guys and i will see you in the next one bye